If you've ever wanted to practice pivoting in your own home lab, this video is absolutely for you. Now, in the past, I have created some content on me setting up my own lab and using that to demonstrate the concept of pivoting from one server to another. But I've gotten some comments on that video asking, you know, how did you actually set up that lab? So what I'm going to do is just take you through step by step on how you can set up uh, the lab as well for yourself to really do what I recommend all the time on this channel. And that is not just watch the videos, but take what you learn and apply them, practice them, get the hands-on keyboard experience that's ultimately going to help you actually set yourself apart from people and actually learn this stuff. So let's just get right into it. So I am here in my software of choice, which is VMware Workstation. Now, when I first made the video, I was using VirtualBox. So you can do this just as well in VirtualBox. It's really all preference and it's not too much different. I don't think one way or the other, but I'll just step through the process on VMware Workstation. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to create a network. So if I come up here to edit, I will open the virtual network editor. And as you see by default, we have a couple things that are in place here. We have a host only assigned to VMNet1 and VMNet8 is designated as the NAT. So this requires some elevated permissions. So I'm gonna click on change settings. It's gonna prompt for UAC, I'll click yes. And now we launched it as administrator, which also shows us there's also this VMNet0, which is used for bridge networks. So what we're going to want to do is add our own network here. So I'll just click add network and we will add VMNet2. And now we're going to edit that to assign it everything that we need basically. So we select VMNet2 and we can go down here to subnet and we can choose our subnet and subnet mask. I'm just going to make this really simple. I'm going to create a 10 dot network. So we'll do 10 dot so we do 10.10.0 as our network. Dot zero dot zero. And we'll leave the subnet mask as it is. We'll use DHCP settings. Everything else should be fine. So let's just go ahead and click apply on that. And it's restarting the services, installing the host adapter. And this virtual network should be ready to go. So we can just click OK. And move on here. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is set up and uh, have configure our virtual machines to use this adapter. So first let's kind of map out what we're trying to do here. Like what is the scenario that we want to practice in our lab? So just going to paint here. So we have three servers, okay? Let's just imagine a scenario where we have some kind of internal network, we'll say, right? So this is the internal network, which is, that will be the network that we just created in the editor. So the 10.10.0.0 slash 24. That is the network we just created. And then of course, we have the external network here. So I'll just draw it like this. This is the external network, and we'll just use NATing for that. So I'm not even sure what my external network is. Let's just say it's something like this. So now you have an internal ne network and an external network. So now let's actually take these machines, and usually you want about three machines at a bare minimum in order to really make use of pivoting. So what are these machines, right? So the first machine will be our attacker machine. We're on the external network. We wanna get into the internal network. So we're sitting here, we'll say attacker VM, and we have an IP address on this, uh, on this network here. We do not have an IP address on the internal network but there is a web server or some kind of system that does have access to both of these networks. That's the key here. 
So we have a, a system that has a couple IP addresses, right? It has an internal IP and an external IP. If we could compromise this system, we'd be able to pivot through this system to access this internal server here that only has an internal IP. Because just to iterate here, external IP. So in our case, as the attacker, we only have the external IP. There is a host, presumably, that has both an internal and external IP. So because it has an external IP that is on the same network, we can communicate back and forth between the server. We can't communicate directly with this internal one, but if we were able to compromise this server here, we could pivot through it because it has this internal IP here. We could communicate with this other internal system and... If we had more internal servers, we could also presumably communicate with those as well, assuming there's no firewall or anything to stop us, uh, to stop this server from communicating with other servers internally, that is. So hopefully that doesn't overcomplicate things. It keeps everything simple enough. And now that you know we know that, let's kind of map this to the different servers that I have here. So I have a box that is called Kali CTF, Commando VM, and Kali 922. So we'll just call this CTF, and we'll call this 922, just so we don't get confused between the two Kali machines here. And we'll call this Commando. So we have, those are the three servers that we have. So we could really set this up however we want. I am going to call our attacker box. We'll go with... So for our attacker box, I will go with this right here, 922. So this is the 922 box. The one that's on the edge here, we'll call it the commando, commando box. And then this internal one can be CTF box, the Kali CTF machine. So... If that's how we want to set up our lab, how would we actually configure that within VMware Workstation? Well, it's pretty simple. Same thing with uh, VirtualBox. If you're using that, it's the same steps. We're just going to go to each one and configure the settings. So we'll go to our CTF machine, right-click it, go to settings. And we want this, you know, going back to the diagram here, the CTF box should only have the internal IP, not the external IP. I'm I'm really saying internal and external, but not that, you know, this is still an internal IP address here. So not to confuse anyone too much when I say external, I just mean it's on a different network. We're just pretending this is like the wider internet or some kind of external network when in reality, this is an internal IP address. It's just a different network, a different subnet. So hopefully that's not getting too confusing. Yes, these are all internal IP addresses, but this is just a scenario that we're demonstrating here. But we just want to have in that 10 dot range. So what we do is go to network adapter and we would change from NAT to custom. And we would choose the VM net two that we configured earlier. And so it would only have that. Now, the next thing we could do is set up for a commando VM. Remember this one should be dual nick It should have two interfaces, one for that internal network, one for the external network. So we'll just go into settings and this wasn't here originally. What I did was I hit network adapter or you could click anywhere in here. Then you click add and say you want to add a network adapter. So that's how you add a second NIC. So the first one we're good to keep on natted. Then for the next adapter, we want to change that to VM net two. So it gets that 10 dot address, click OK. And it's gonna restart it. And then that should be good to go. And then the last one will be our 922 machine. So you go here. And then for this one, we only need one. So I'll just remove this other one here. This one should only be on the external network as we're calling it. So we'll just say NAT. And that's all we need. 
So now let's just test that we can communicate between the boxes. So if I look at my IP addresses here with the ifconfig command, we'll see that we only have that 192 address. So we're only on that network. So if we wanted to contact this Kali CTF machine, we can't do that because you see here, this does not have that 192 address, just the 10 dot address. So if I try to reach that machine, you'll see that I can't because they're not on the same network in that case. So I'll try to ping it and you see network unreachable because this is only on the, uh, the 10 dot network here. But this command OVM, if we take a look at this, it has multiple NICs. So you see here, you have the 192 address and then scrolling down a bit, you also have the 10 dot address. So from here, if we tried to ping it, let me just copy that one more time. Let's see if we can reach that from here. So I ping that and I'm able to communicate between those machines because this has multiple NICs. So if I get a reverse shell on the system, you know, in some kind of way, maybe through a vulnerability, maybe through social engineering, whatever the case may be, what you should see is that this machine is actually able to communicate with this machine here because it's also on that network. Hopefully that is making sense to everyone. Let me just clear this out real quick. We'll try to ping it from here. And we see that we are able to reach that machine. So that's the idea. That is how you set it up. This is the conceptual kind of diagram of what we're building and, and why it works. So hopefully that helps clear everything up and really shows you how to actually do it in VMware Workstation. If you are using VirtualBox, again, it's not too much different very similar process from what I recall when I made that video um, way back when. So as you're learning this stuff, as you're leveling up, eventually you're going to come to the point where you're ready to start interviewing for jobs. And when you do, you're definitely going to want to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know. You can get that absolutely for free down in the description below. And if you want to get into some more technical content, I have that on screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.